Oh snap, we're back. We did our almost that video as today, ladies and gentlemen, we're approved to the world that Alioth is still great. Not amazing, but great. Playable, definitely playable. Six energy, eight power, unreveal. Remove the text from all unrevealed enemy cards here. If you live under a rock, or more of a normal scenario, you have got into Marvel Snap like very recently, and you're not aware of what this card used to be, uh, this card, Timmy, sit down, I got a story to tell you, is six energy, was six energy rather, it's the same cost, but it used to be two power. And it had a text that says, on reveal, destroy all unrevealed enemy cards here. This led to Eliath becoming one of the most hated cards in the game. Like essentially that's what Eliath was. Every time I played Eliath decks on stream, I would never see so many people dying of cringe as with any other deck. Like people have a vendetta against this guy. And I mean, rightfully so. Eliath led to some really uncompelling end games, right? If your opponent had initiative over you, you always had to worry about Eliath and there was no real way to counterplay Eliath unless you had to like avoid the lane he was gonna be played in. So this made it so that a lot of times, in a lot of scenarios, you Eliath would be very clear. It would have to be played in one specific location. But in most games, it really, dabble down to a 50-50. Like, that's what it ultimately was. Like, are they gonna play a Lyoth here or are they gonna play it here? Where are they expecting me to, to push? And yeah, it can be extremely frustrating when you make your play and then you have a card that just completely deletes everything that you do. Uh, it also felt really bad how this card just completely capitalize on the dark dimension uh basically left invisible woman unplayable right like it was a very polarizing card and uh really alongside shang chi perhaps the two most problematic tech cards in the game um compared to other you know initiative friendly tech cards um what i'm what i mean by this is cards that are or tech cards rather cards that are specific that are mostly trading power for ability like they have a special ability that is able to disrupt something that your opponent is doing or has on the board. And uh, two initiative driven or initiative friendly uh, tech cards that are examples of very good design are Cosmo and Juggernaut. I really enjoy using those two. I design decks with a curve that is able to double three drop on six so I can chain them together. Um, and that's essentially a good example because those cards don't automatically win you a location, right? They just um, shut down you know, with Juggernaut, you can just push them away, but Juggernaut can't push stuff away if the other locations are completely full. Um, you also don't control where Juggernaut is pushing the other stuff, so you can't just put him in any deck. You need to put him in a deck that is able to shut down one location so they can, you can then uh, Juggernaut the other, like Cannonball does. I'm talking really fast right now because I don't want this video to be like super long, but uh, that's Juggernaut. Cosmo shut down a location with unreal effects. Uh, Eliath just does it all. Eliath doesn't actually do it all. Eliath removes the abilities from the card. Eliath is like an onboard leech play, right? For that location. You shut that down. But now Eliath can get out muscled. Now, if they play something like a Magneto, then uh, they will overcome your uh, play. So it's not a, an inevitable, unbeatable game if you're ahead. It's just that you can design decks that are really able to capitalize on having this card as an option for turn six. And there are two types of decks that right now, uh, I believe, will thrive with Eliath. Those are Lockdown, which is what we're going to cover today, and the likes of Tempo-driven decks, like the Daredevil uh, Negasonic one that, I, um, that I've showcased several times. Those decks can definitely still benefit from Eliath. Uh, but Eliath is no longer a card that you're going to see uh, all over the, the place, like as a random card in Destroy, for example, which is really good. This change is overall extremely healthy for the game. And I just wish that they applied these decisions to uh, more problematic cards, like Hela, for example. You know, just going to throw that in there. Like, I, I, I'm still like, I'm kind of shocked that Hela is still like a thing. Like, I, I feel like it is by far the worst card, like the worst design in the game. And uh, yeah, I every day that passes and that card just is the way it is it's just like i'm losing my mind but uh we're not gonna go there we're gonna we're gonna talk about a in this video i'm already all over the place four minutes uh four minutes and a half in so yeah but um let's just dive into the sweet stuff like just cover the basics and i'll send you on your way so we have a 
the new fart. Basically not the most original deck you've ever seen, but like I said in, in yesterday's video, I got Jeff recently and I'm gonna be playing a lot of Jeff because, you know, I'm catching up, right? <laughs> like, I know I'm late to the party, but God damn it, let, let me have some fun. Let me try this card out uh, as it can enhance a lot of decks that I like to play specifically. This is a Miss Marvel lockdown deck. We have Storm and we have, um, I mean, we only have Storm to shut down a location. And then we have Miss Marvel to allow us to generate a lot of power in the mid stage of the game. That's what I've said, like that's where Elith, um, you know, really shines in a deck that's able to kind of like out muscle its way into an initiative positive position. And Miss Marvel is one of the best ways to do that. Why? Because she's obscenely powerful. She is four points on her own body and then gives plus five to the flanks. What I like about Miss Marvel though, is that she has that requirement. Um, apparently she did not have a requirement before. I don't know exactly what was her original form, but that sounds terrifying. Uh, but that's actually like a very neat aspect of her design. And while I have bashed Miss Marvel in the past, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit of a hypocrite with her because I really enjoy playing with her. Uh, meeting the requirement for her, and the fact that that requirement can be disrupted, which you will also see in this video as well, I think um, makes her a very, very fun card uh, to play with. Like, it doesn't feel like, um, like she is busted in the sense that she is a lot. She represents 14 power for five energy, for four energy, which is wild. But you know, it comes at a, a, at a specific deck building price and it can be, it can be disrupted. So I, I think, you know, she's fine. And I wanted to play with her, but I, I really wanted to have Jeff because I think that Jeff really makes Miss Marvel as strong as she is. Like uh, it's, it's, it's that you, that movement for a two drop that's not vulnerable to Killmonger. It's just super, super important for this sort of tactic. What we have here is a deck that generates a lot of points on curve. We're playing Nebula because Nebula is a phenomenal card for lockdown decks. Not for what you would think because I don't like playing Nebula in the location that I'm gonna storm. I don't know what this, the, you know, I don't know how people normally play these decks because <laughs> I'm a narcissist. I just focus on my own thing. Uh, but the way I play, you know, Nebula is I play Nebula on a location where I want my opponent to be playing their stuff. Nebula acts like Lizard. Like, in fact, Nebula on one location and Lizard in the other is a great starting point because I do want to storm the location where Lizard is in, right? Because that's a location that is less like my opponent is going to be able to fill and I'm going to get that sweet five power for two energy. With Nebula, I can drag my opponent's plays away from that and then I can storm the location that's empty. So I can follow it up with a Jessica Jones, and then I can set up a Miss Marvel or develop a vision. One of the great things about like storming to Jessica Jones on turn five, I found that is an excellent turn for Gamora. Like it's an excellent setup for Gamora, right? Cause you're limiting one location where they can play stuff. And then if you have a Nebula on the board, you know, lore friendly synergy right here, uh, your your opponent is likely going to be developing into the nebula lane. Otherwise, you know, if they're already, already losing in the flood, they can't really afford to be losing in the nebula lane as well. So you can use that knowledge and get a 12 point five energy play, which is not easy to come by, baby, and can really allow you to set up that muscle for then a turn six alive onto the same location. Uh, but obviously there's a bunch of different uh, lines of play. It's not just all about Elioth. Dr. Doom with Miss Marvel is f absolutely phenomenal. Vision uh, gives us, so it's either Gamora or Vision setting up a play that can uh, either give us a, a lot of power or have a, a utility like big stick that can move into the flood if we need it. Like, because sometimes we play Storm into Miss Marvel in the middle and then we reinforce it. Like we can go Storm, Miss Marvel, and then we can go Vision and even Dr. Doom if we need that as well. Like there's just a bunch of different lines with this deck, but it's, it's reliable. It's consistent it puts in a lot of power and uh it's not particularly vulnerable to um to a lot of tech cards as well and i feel it has a good matchup table and i really um i i use this deck, this deck to climb uh quite a bit i i was derailing my rank uh i ended up in like 900 and something and with this deck i got to like top 600 um, relatively quickly. So definitely a very strong deck to climb with. I wanted to share a really good deck with you guys today, especially after yesterday. <laughs> and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. I'm gonna stop rambling because this has been far longer than it needed to be. But thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for daily Marvel Snap content. Hope you enjoy today's games. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. But that's, that's what we're in here for. Oh, double, double storm. What happened to the zoomer lighting? Um, I need to figure it out because when I resort to the lighting, it, it makes like the, the, the room gets really dark. And I don't know if you guys prefer that or not.
Double storm. Wind. I need to top the Goliath. <laughs> Victory. I don't fucking know, dude. Like, does it matter? What did I have on my right? I had lizard on my right. Like, what do you mean, why Jeff and I right? Like the Miss Miss Marvel man. Magway is a 4 5 player. No need to optimize plays. Except moving Jeff to the right actually like loses me a shitload of points. Like, double Storm could be a thing for this deck. Looks solid. Yeah, I mean, Double Storm is. Um, it's not really possible without that location, though. It's kind of the downside there. And uh, yes, we Gamora here. We make use of the super flow. Instead of, of tackling the super flow, we actually um, hit the, the big house and we're going to storm Gamora for like a bazillion points. That's, yeah, that's okay. Cool, cool, cool. Now, now it's my turn. Uh, what about What about my animation? What the fuck? What about my fucking animation, dude? Um, Elias? <laughs> Elias is actually better here in its form than the other one because, like, the body still, like, remains, right? So they're clogged. <laughs> Omega oh, Megalol. Oh my god, no. oh. <laughs> oh my god. Victory. <laughs> oh yeah, this car is fine. Um, Nebula into Shadowland is, is really good. The problem is it doesn't know. She prevents my Miss Marvel, so I'm actually going to play Nebula on this side. 
Because her preventing me. Oh, oh. Oh, shit. Okay, we're going to have to just. Remove the ongoing effect there. Seems like a Cerebro too, but then it isn't. It's kind of weird. How do they make it here? I need to ally with them. I could also just vision. They play something here, vision, and then I and then I ally with. I think they're gonna Ultron. Whatever, whatever it is, they're playing it here. Another fart win. Mm. Guys, I'm I'm in a I'm in a Lyoth main. It's just a lot of ways that game can go downhill very badly for us. So we do the brave thing, the Chad move. We run. Not because we're cowards, but because we know better. I mean, they have the reality stone now. Vision mind games. I was expecting maybe like a blob in the middle or something so i just i just kind of like one i wanted to beat a vision moving to the middle and them like playing into the because the, the the beautiful thing about nebula here is even though they have a super soul stone like they kind of they can't leave the soul stone alone with nebula they have to play into it 5k you can't last the put one yeah keep keep, keep blaming not having cards for being bad um again Stop the ads. Subscribe then. I, I I think I think it's a great idea.
friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. Wind aid my hand. Mogwai, have you ever played Shadowverse? Yes, I have. What do you want to hear about it? A Polska boy, why? Electra and Bucky? Electra and Bucky. Good. Nice. Duh! Angel! <laughs> what? Angel! Miss Marvel, Miss Marvel, do do Miss Marvel, mm 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 mm. Isn't Vision on here just like the best? Have they played anything onto that location? They haven't. So if I if I move Jeff, like I want to have initiative. What if they Zola? I still beat Zola. I still beat Arnim Zola on the left. What a pretty cool play. Unfortunately, they didn't really think it through, huh? Victory. But, yeah, like, that's the problem with playing Angel with Killmonger.
We're getting a lot of Onslaught Citadels on the left. I don't like it. Oh god, I just... And it's always the Quinjets, dude. Every time this happens, it's always fucking Loki. Can, can, can we stop? I'd like to play Lizard into Necrotia, but I'm going to develop him there, because... Hmm... I'm going to need a little bit of power here, I think, on the right. I'm going to go Gladiator. I believe Gladiator will pull something weak. There we go. Um, I mean, oh, that that kind of that kind of fucking sucks. They they have a they have a crazy rocket raccoon now. What the what in the actual what? Oh. There it is. Oh my goodness, there it is. Um They're actually not going to play anything there? Are you crazy? But you, you could just auto-lose that the Sakaar. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. You just gave it to me. You just gave it to me. I hope you're happy. What a play. What a fucking play. I'm so glad I didn't go with the original game plan. Because the original game plan was to move Vision here and to Doctor Doom. But I'm like, I'm just like, they have to do, they have to know because they played Morph. They know I have a Doctor Doom. So they have to know that whatever it is, they have to beat Vision and, and Doombot uh, adding points to the left. Which means they need more than, uh, they need more than 10 points. They need 11 points or more. Or... Or something like this, like Arrow moving the Rocket Raccoon, which um, which nullifies the Miss Marvel, right? But they need something to nullify my points here. So they're going to have a weak play in the middle, and I'm going to catch up on them on the middle. <laughs> 